But with um, our group now, uh, Jeremiah, he, um, at one of our meetings, because he, he had taken me aside and said, I, I'd like to sit down and talk with you. And, and so at one of the meetings, he just came out in front of the whole group and said, I, when I first met you, I felt like you had something negative attached to you. I to saw the right it side of your to body. your right side of your body. And that was right, I think, right when the, the whole thing happened when, Shauna. with Shauna calling and saying that, you know, she mentioned my You're name. like, it's the cat. It. Well, I was no, like at first, no, just but even Jennifer picked up his equipment because um, we were we were we were doing an equipment meeting and we were just passing things around um, the room, and she picked up his um, K two. It was or, our light. Yeah, and she's yeah. like, "Oh, Scott, you need to clean <laughs> cleanse your stuff," <laughs> you know. And this is like at two totally different times. That's just showing how like in tune our team is, but yeah. It, so what did you do about it? Do you end up getting like a cleansing or what do you do? No, I, Jeremiah and I are going to are gonna meet. I think he's going to meet with all of us. And that's when he came out and said, look, I think it'd be a good idea if we just do a regular cleansing for everyone. So once you guys start going on investigations, come back, we'll get refocused, we'll cleanse everybody yeah, and just clean in. it all out so that you guys can go back out there, which is, it's great that we have that, you know. I know a lot of um, investigators and I think, HPI does it, but don't they cleanse like right be, like the, before they leave the place? Like um, sometimes we do, but we always do like a, a closing prayer to the very least. I mean, it's kind of hard to do like a full on smudging in, in somebody's house, um, but um, you know, we just kind of keep. I mean, we're pretty close, like as far as being friends too, and we talk to each other besides just doing cases and stuff. And if one of us is not feeling right, I mean, we're we've got a good support network, so. <clears throat> um, but yeah, we always do a, a, a protection prayer going in and coming out. But yeah, that's something that we've recently talked about in our um, meetings is that we think that maybe we should be a little bit more proactive as far as spiritually keeping ourselves um, protected by doing more cleansings and that sort of thing. Do you think that certain people are more vulnerable to, like, do you, are you pretty specific who's on your team to make sure, like, these types of things aren't happening, like you need a strong person or spiritually strong, or, or we, doesn't that? We ask that everybody that's on our team has some kind of belief system. We don't, like, promote one religion over another or anything like okay. that. As long as you have some kind of spirituality, because that's going to help protect you going in. Yeah. And like me, I, I find myself under, like, I don't want to say attack quite frequently, but but, but with me being an empath, um, I do have the tendency to um, feel what other people are feeling while, you know, I, just sitting in a room. Um, on cases, I don't really don't like to touch people too much because I, it, it pulls on to me immediately. So I'm one of those, like, you know, with Jeremiah and stuff, I'm having to keep you know, and check with my own emotions and things that are different. But this last case, the one we were talking about with the attachments, this last case, I felt myself like literally um, being drugged down and feeling really bad and kind of falling into a depression a little bit and just kind of having a string of bad luck. So like with me in particular, I have to be really careful about um, how I handle each case and people I come in contact with. But that's me going into Walmart too. Um, you know, there's what we call psychic vampires that actually without knowing they um, seek out other people's energies and they will drain you. And people that are empaths actually get affected really, really bad. There is a lady, she's a spiritual healer. Mm -hmm. And she said she, um, she has that a lot. Like if she, as soon as she's done with a, a client, if she doesn't like do some sort of ritual type thing. thing yeah she said it will totally drain her and that's me that's yeah. me but that's good though because um jeremiah is a spiritual healer so that's great but he can see me like even this last meeting he's like you're feeling better huh and i'm like no not really and he, and he looked at me and I, and I realized our last conversation i was like well yeah better than the last time i guess but it's still i can feel it and so now um, as far as, was that the only time, or did you ever have anybody kind of, like, read you unexpectedly? I actually, strangely, um, I don't know if I do it just um, because I meditate a lot to keep myself clean, and I kind of, um, I don't know if you're into auras and that sort of thing, but try to put a protective bubble around myself, and it takes a lot of concentration on my behalf to get that um, to happen um, but sometimes I've been told by people who are mediums or whatever that they can't read me too well because but I make a conscious effort to block people out because it makes me sick okay so that's interesting that you would say that because you guys all know Paul Dale Roberts too and mm -hmm. he, he said that he they don't read him either yeah and it's probably he probably protects himself naturally because he's been into it for so long and 
it's just something I've recently learned how to do. Because yeah. I'm like, even going in Walmart makes me ill because I can read other people's energies. My worst, though, is with animals. And I'm sure Scott's listened to my Facebook rants about <laughs> it. But uh, people will post, like, animal cruelty um, pictures. And it really, 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 really upsets me. Not, like, to a normal, um, just like, oh, my God, that's really sad. That's horrible that that's happening. I, there was a picture going around of two guys beating a dog on Facebook. And it made me sick. Mm -hmm. I couldn't function like to the point like I was in mourning I could feel the fear I could feel the um, you know the what the dog was feeling okay next week you're going to want to listen to the show okay Okay, I've got this lady that's coming on and she actually um, like reads animals oh my favorite yeah that's awesome. I think it's going to be really sweet. And she also can read people and everything else, but she focuses on animals and what's wrong with them <laughs> and, you know, how they're feeling or why they're sick or oh just God. different things. I should, I, should bring my, I should bring my Siamese by. I'd love to know what it's inside. <laughs> that would cool. be pretty cool. But she does remote readings, too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I'm excited to have her on there and just something different, you know, that's to do the cool. animals and stuff. And so it's interesting you brought up the ghost cat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've never witnessed that before. I had to, we put on, I put on our Facebook page. I said, has anybody had an animal come back? Because that's the only thing I could think of when I immediately lay in there in bed and I start feeling movement at the end of the bed and I know it's not anything else. And then I was like, that it has to be the cat. You know, like maybe the cat has something that it, because the cat knew, I feel that it was going to die. The night before it went in for surgery, mm-hmm. it spent time with my wife, and then it came out and spent time with me, and it didn't usually do that. Aww. And then the next day, we took it in for just a simple surgery, and the vet called and said, I'm sorry, but your cat just died mm-hmm. on the table. That's so sad. Yeah, so I think either it has an attachment to us through that blanket, that comforter, because I think that's the only thing that's left around since the cat was there. And then so it just, you know... Well, and animals don't do. come with, like, a pre- preconceived notion that they're not supposed to feel um, yeah. ghosts or anything like that. So we're all that they know. I mean, imagine only living in a house. It's not like they go to Walmart and meet other people or they socialize on, on networks. All they know is us. Yeah. Like, my cat, he was 14 when he passed away, and he's definitely with me. Um, the house that he passed away in, we heard him all the time. He had a really unique meow that we called him wah because, he, <laughs> because it sounded like he was saying wah. But um, my daughter came in one night crying. She's just like, I, I can hear Otis. I can hear him. Mom, come out here. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just go lay in bed with her for a little while. And I was just starting to drift off. And sure enough, I heard him. That's and so And I'm like, Odie, wild. is that you? <laughs> but, okay, um, so that, I mean, it's yeah. common then. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it is. Well, okay, just like the one investigation that Paul said he was on where that lady, he went out back and he got those orbs and it had the two Rottweilers in it. I mean, and then he was like, do you have anything in your backyard? She goes, just some fruit trees. She goes, anything else? And then she's like, well, my two dogs I buried back there. So she was, that's an animal activity. Yeah, that's and then cool. even when she looked at the orbs, um, she saw specifically her dogs yeah. in the picture, not wow. just two dogs. It was her actual two dogs, exactly. See, hmm. That's cool. That'd that's be interesting pretty to see. wild. Yeah. I, I think that's really cool. I mean, like a lot of people don't understand. Like, I mean, animals, we're, everything is alive. Mm -hmm. everything is energy everything Everything is alive and you know and so why wouldn't animals i mean like um i've had some really weird dreams people listening they're gonna be all wow whatever (laughs) but (laughs) yeah well i had some weird dreams where like a horse was talking to me telepathically it, I, and I, in my dream, it was normal. In my dream, I was it was like this war-type dream, and I was going up to the woods, and I was trying to get my kids, me and my kids, up to this safe place. And th- we're, like, under attack or something. And this horse came up alongside and was talking telepathically to me, telling me where the safe camp was and mm-hmm. kind of walked with us a little. And then when I woke up, I was like, yeah, and the, ca- and the horse told me. I was all, the horse told me <laughs> that's right you know what i mean so i mean it's kind of strange but like so it must be somehow a normal thing like if in your dream it's not abnormal and you don't no. it you know what i mean like i think dreams are pretty interesting because i think a lot of the abilities or a lot of things that we really can do happen and we just think it's a weird weird dream you well, know there's like some saying i don't know i've seen it on some post but um is that you know we are we are energy. We're not this body. We are actually an energy source that, I mean, we're actually a soul. Yeah. So why wouldn't we be able to communicate back and forth? I mean, day to day, I think that, you know, we all communicate each other, with each other without talking. I mean, just through body language, just, you know, you could just look at somebody sometimes and understand what they're 
about to even or, say. Yeah, so I, I don't think it's far-fetched. Well, or, even uh, like Albert Einstein said that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So basically it's transferred on to something else, you know, whether it be uh, an animal or, <clears throat> excuse me, any living thing, it just transfers on to something else. So when an animal dies or we die, it transfers to another place. It doesn't just disappear. Well, what I think is cool is our radio waves. They're just going to go on forever. Mm-hmm. Well, there's Something been cases where, like in 19, like the 1940s, the the signal bounces back, and there's been ships out at sea that have actually caught the broadcast from like the 1940s. And yeah. that goes back to that radio ghost thing. They've wondered if it's um, because the, the intelligent communication they were getting um, during wartime was in a different language, but it was a totally different war, you know? So they were wondering if it was old transmissions that were being bounced around because, you know, everything operates off of crystals. And I'm like a big crystal person, but crystals hold memory. And that's what radio and television and everything else is, computers and all that have in them. Um, So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I heard a a theory on on those broadcasts is that they're actually, they're bouncing back off of uh, nearby planets and stars. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I think that's so cool that like people can listen to it or other beings if they wanted to. Right. That's cr- Oh, like that. Oh my Gee, God. It sounds, it sounds similar <laughs> it's like to that. that. Mo- it's like that movie Signs. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Bonnie's <laughs> going to be calling in pretty soon, isn't she? She should be. Yeah. yeah hopefully. I'm waiting for her. Yeah, because, you know, she always calls in with our vegan recipe. Yeah, I'm, I'm a know, vegetarian, so. so. Oh, I, you know what? I thought you were uh-huh. from what you were know. saying <laughs> and everything like that because so am I. Yeah, animals are friends, not food. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, and then, the, you know, I had a person telling me, um, actually, a good friend, Monica. Um, she's from the Healing Hands. And she was actually seeing how plants and, like, trees, they they actually can do recordings, and they can hear a tree scream when it's being cut down. Yeah. And so now I'm like, wait, uh, how... I can't eat they anything. They say that sucks for me. <laughs> like, like being an empath is like I can feel sadness. Like, did you notice all these trees down here that they've cut down? Uh-uh. At the end of Simpson Lane, they rip out. I, I go this way. Yeah, they ripped out all these all these trees from the river bottoms, and they're just laying there, and they're dead. And it's just like I got so sad when I saw that. I was like, oh, my God. I, like, mankind just has no. No boundaries. Like, no compassion. Lack of compassion and empathy for other living things. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so, I mean, and she was saying something that, that actually – if a person figured it out, like in your mind, you could actually feed yourself energy and you wouldn't need to eat or something like that. Mm. Wow. I mean, I don't know of anybody who could do that right now, but it'd be, that's an interesting concept. I would concept. be like this big. <laughs> I would, because I like feeding off everybody all the time. Yeah. I think it's a different concept of feeding. Yeah, though. But definitely. you're feeling all the time. Yeah, that's cool. So It's cool, but it's also horrible. Yeah. There's a lot of negative people out there. Yeah. That would be hard. Chris looks like um, we're going to a break <laughs> right now, you guys. So stay tuned for the dirt. She looks like Are you looking for a place with a friendly atmosphere where you can relax, enjoy a great pub-style meal, a delicious handmade burger, or perhaps authentic Mexican street tacos or delicious fish tacos, all at an affordable price? A place where you can go sing karaoke or listen to a great live band or perhaps dance to top DJ music? Look no further. Jillian's Bar and Grill, located in the heart of historic downtown Lincoln, holds the key to all your food and entertainment desires. Jillian's Bar and Grill is proud to offer a full menu of great pub style food and a full bar they have entertainment five nights per week wednesday through sunday come visit jillian's today at 605 g street on the corner of 6th and g street in lincoln or find us on facebook by searching jillian's bar and grill that's d-i-l-l-i-a-n-s jillian's bar and grill call 916-434-8171 for the entertainment calendar that's jillian's bar and grill $5 subs are back at Quiznos. Any sub, any size, for just $5. Every Monday after 2 p.m., we closing. More meat, more flavor, more Quiznos. Mmm, toasty. 
Come check out these deals exclusively at the Lincoln, Roseville, and Folsom locations. And don't forget to mention KMYC 1410 AM. Quiznos, the official sponsor of the dirt. Hey, are you looking for a place to hang out or watch a big game? Come on down to Bar 101 in Old Town Roseville on the corner of Main and Lincoln Street. We have 21 beers and a full bar serving great specialty cocktails. Try our wide selection of American fusion cuisine served every day for lunch and dinner. With seven HD TVs, fresh food, and a friendly atmosphere, Bar 101 is the place to be. Visit our website at Bar 101 Roseville or like us on Facebook by searching Bar 101 Roseville. Are you ready to buy or sell your home, lands, or investment property? Call Lori Schultz with American Home Realty at 916-960-9600. Short sales, investments, first-time home buyers. Please give me a call, Lori Schultz, 916-960-9600. Lori and her guests are waiting to hear from you. Give them a call at 742-5555. That's 742-5555. Here's Lori and the Dirt. Hi, everybody. You're listening to The Dirt. Thank you so much. It's been a great show. And we're. I think this is our last segment, isn't it? Yep. Last segment. Huh? Oh, it's it's so sad so to see you guys go. I love you guys so much. <laughs> so again, I we love you thank, too. Thank you. I want to thank Anna Hill and also Scott Wolf for being here from the Angels of Light. Um, Paranormal Society. Yeah. You're right. I was you're like, right. the, okay. I was you're like, giving Alps. shout outs to other groups. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. For Alps and and you guys are just awesome. And I want everybody to hear your information one more time because I mean, when you guys are here, I mean, the whole, you want to pick up. Right. Or, you know, yeah, our best, your best bet is just to look us up on Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook, um, like I said, you know, Google us. We have pages that are out there. Uh, email's really good. It's um, like just like Angels of Light. It's Alps, A L P S, um, Yuba, cetera, at gmail.com. Um, you know, we, we have a blog at uh, blogspot.com. Oh, cool. If you look for uh, Alps, and uh, we do residentials and we do businesses, so you know we're eager to get out there and do any investigations. But if you're listening, and just you can always get a hold of um, Lori at the Dirt too, and she'll yeah. put you in touch with us. We're Absolutely, happy to help anytime. All right, thanks you guys so much, and guess what? Our vegan lady called in, Bonnie. Are you here with us? I am. Hi. I, I just shot her a text. I'm all. Are you calling? <laughs> well, lost track of time because we're watching um, Ian Allen Victoria. So um, I totally. Oh, that's okay. That's totally okay. So, so would you have a good vegan recipe? I actually have a vegan here with me right now. Yes, you do. Okay, great. Yes, I do. Um, this is. These are all um, all the veg- vegetables I have in this salad are from our garden, and I prepared this lunch for myself today. <laughs> and so, um, it's kind of fun because we're already getting produce basically from our garden, which is awesome. That is so. awesome. It's um, called Fresh Lips and Basil Garden Salad, (laughs) (laughs) because that's what I have. And it's um, one cup of arugula, chopped or torn into pieces, Um, an eighth of a cup orange mint leaves, so it's like a specific kind of mint, it's called orange mint, I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but it's really good. Uh, It's not not as quite as minty, it's more of like earthy, I guess, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but it's not like super minty, which is A little bit more mild. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And then um, a quarter cup of sweet basil torn into pieces and a quarter cup of dark opal basil torn into pieces. And dark opal basil is um, not as sweet as sweet basil, but it still has that interesting basil flavor, but lighter, I guess. It's okay. really good. And it's like a purplish color, which is good, too. Um, and a quarter cup of cilantro chopped and a cup of purple bistro lettuce. And then you lightly toss those ingredients together, and then you add about a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to, but or to taste. And then a tablespoon of olive, olive oil to taste, and then sea salt to taste, and fresh ground pepper, and then lightly mix the ingredients together and eat it. Yeah, <laughs> and enjoy that it. really good. I need to come shopping at your garden. <laughs> I, I have before. It's so awesome. I left with garbage bags full, or or yeah. what? Else? Shopping bags full. I'm garbage, garbage bags. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, That's funny because I yeah. use them for garbage bags sometimes after. <laughs> so exactly. anyway, wait, she has a huge garbage garden. Now. It's so <laughs> it's so awesome. Good. I'm but still trying flavors, to plant mine. Like, oh, I'm sorry. What? Oh, I was just saying how awesome your garden is, and I'm still trying to plant mine. 
Oh, yeah, it's, it's even it's bigger nice. this year. Troy and I have added more. In fact, he's going to plant some blueberries tomorrow. We have we bought three different varieties, and actually, I think he bought five. But so he bought five, and then he's going to plant some, and so they're already starting, which will be fun to have blueberries too. Oh, you're so lucky. Yeah, I had a garden once, a really nice one, and you I, did. It was huge. I never knew that that many things would grow. I was like giving things away. I had zucchini every night. They would, I was like, I need to put a camera on these things because they grow overnight. They're like, yep. they're <laughs> like little. So the next day they're a foot long. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, I have a really green thumb when it comes to outdoor gardens, but all my indoor <laughs> plants are just like, help. <laughs> I don't survive either. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Bonnie. I hope you guys have fun at the park, and thank you for calling in with your great recipe. Sure, you're welcome. I wish, you know, I was wishing I could make it and then, you know, one day make something and then bring it into the studio or something. I'm so wishing that too it. all the time. I always wish that. That would be awesome. <laughs> so we'll plan on that. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> She's Especially this sounds summer great. when you're we have lots of stuff coming up, you know, lots of um, vegetables coming out up and growing up. It'd be great to do that. Okay, that's She's making fun. my stomach growl. I know, me too. I'm, <laughs> I'm wanting one of those salads. It is interesting, though. Like, you change a couple of the different ingredients like that, and you get a salad that has a whole different flavor. Um, I actually made one the, um, the other night. I used the spinach, strawberries, um, raw cashews, um, those little mandarin oranges. Peel those, put those on there. And then I used the... Um, peach vinaigrette and the crushed yeah. mandarin oil that I get from mm. Whole Foods. I just did a shout out. And, <laughs> uh, a plug. and so anyway, um, it's it was so amazing and so like fresh. Yeah. It was summery. And so like just changing a few of the ingredients, you've got something just amazing. Yeah, a lot of people too who haven't gone vegan or vegetarian don't realize how actually hearty and filling the vegetables can be. It's oh yeah. Delicious. And you add like beans on there. Mm-hmm. I, I put some beans and then you've got your protein and you do, you it's satisfying. It's not like you're eating a boring salad every day. You can change it up. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Because this was like a flavor explosion. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. way. Because all the basil and the mint, you know, the orange mint and everything. It was just, it even tasted really good without the balsamic vinegar in there. Just with the olive oil, it just had that buttery flavor. It just it was so good. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you very much, Bonnie. And don't forget to post it on the dirt. So, oh, yeah. all right. Well, you guys have fun. Love you. Okay, I love you, too. Thanks a lot. I love you. All righty. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thank you, Bonnie, for calling in. And so that was our vegan recipe. I'm so going to have dinner when I get home. I'm hungry now. (laughs) I know. She posts a lot of cool stuff, like some really cool. There's always beverages or smoothies or this and that. So (laughs) on the dirt page, you'll actually... You actually find vegan recipes, and it's it's because that you know the promoting the healthy mind, body, and soul. You know, definitely. Yep. So oh, Jeremiah would love to talk to you about that. Oh yeah, really? yeah. definitely. He's a nutritionist too, as well. Is he? About how the human body does not need meat to survive is actually just something that was introduced later in our being. So, did you ever watch the video um, Forks Over Knives? If mm. it if it has anything to do with animals and. No, I can't. Oh, no, no. It's it's not like that. It just oh, okay. talks about how you don't and how actually we're the only um, we're the only country that drinks other things milk. Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I don't eat dairy, and, and it's, oh, I definitely would never drink a glass of milk. It's disgusting. It's yeah, like, it's, I mean, it's most adult me. animals of any other species anywhere, they don't keep drinking milk forever. Yeah. It's just gross. I mean, if you're not willing to totally... Okay. Even, even with a chocolate chip cookie? Ew. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Are I can't even turn that milk? down. Are you kidding me? Almond milk? Almond milk would be delicious. Almond milk? Almond milk. That's it's, not milk, It's got to be vitamin D or none. It's got to be whole milk? milk. I have to. Uh, I don't like whole milk. Whole milk is delicious. I won't drink it's it straight. So it has to be like so cold but <laughs> or so with cookies good. or cereal. Almond Otherwise milk I won't drink isn't it. that bad. It really it's isn't. Really it's pretty good. good. It's better than soy milk. Yeah, I agree. See, we got almond milk. Person Those aren't. Here. That's not milk. That's juice. It that's, is not it's juice. Almond juice. It's, it's almond juice. Still like soy, juice. soy juice. I still yeah. like to see how they make it. How they squeeze the milk out of the almond. Um, juice. Yeah, <laughs> actually, my sister, if she's listening, Bonnie, maybe she should post her recipe for making homemade almond milk. It's really, really yeah. good. That'd be cool. Yeah. And so it's anyway. kind of funny. You can't squeeze blood out of a turnip, but you could squeeze milk out of an almond. <laughs> <laughs> That's super funny that you said that. That should be just one of those quotes. You uh, it. Anna Hill said that. Like, <laughs> exactly. Write that down. Was that she's just got your a new, own? She's got a new yeah. intro. 
That, oh I, I'm a funny one sometimes. <laughs> I, come, I don't know where this stuff comes from. <laughs> well, you know, it's from my like astral projecting. I guess yeah, I just, I'm a comedian. I don't you're know. a comedian <laughs> of another planet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're funny. In a oh planetary. Oh, sorry. I'm Superiorly divine <laughs> comedian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're hilarious. So, um, as far as the astral projection and all that stuff goes, I'm just so glad you guys shared all of that with us. Oh. Boy, people are gonna think we're nuts. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. You know what? They probably lucid dream. No, oh, yeah. A lot of people do. I Everybody just has to sometime. I mean, it, and sleepwalking is another form of that too. It's just kind of the opposite. Really, so I, I, just I sometimes the, sleepwalk. The human mind is a crazy thing. It's mm-hmm. a never-ending mystery. So, yeah. I wonder if certain people are more susceptible, though. I mean, obviously. I'm, I wonder. I'm sitting by two of them. I don't know. Like, I wonder if there <laughs> anybody's more susceptible to it. But you guys never learned how it just happened to you. I think the sleep apnea thing maybe is something that that brought it on. It, I know it did for me. Cause I didn't, really? I didn't know anything about it until it started happening. And, yeah, and I, I think mine I was, was stress. Yeah. I was really? a stressed out child, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm such a comedian now. <laughs> <laughs> you like when life is just going easy, it's easy to pick on it. Yeah. Make some jokes on it. Well, do you guys have any future investigations you're looking forward to? Uh, not at the moment. Like I said, we're just looking for anything. We need to get our team out and get them some practice and get in somewhere. We're looking for maybe a business or something that would open up to us and let us come out and investigate and just provide them some answers to maybe what's going on in their their place and anybody that needs a residential you know we're more than willing to go in and help them out okay and up here it seems like you guys should get a quite a few you know you would think so so anyway we are going to be having um the great american story coming up next with bob day nice. and that should be interesting and he's always got some great stories so stay tuned for that and again i just want to thank you both very much for being here um anna hill Scott Wolf and with Alps, the Angels of Light um, Paranormal Society. <laughs> Why am I? Not? I'm like looking at my notes. I, uh, for some reason, after I call it Alps, I can't spell it out. So, anyway, everybody stay tuned for the dirt next week. Thank you very much for being here, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. This is Hooth Broadcasting's Talk Radio 1410, KMYC, Marysville, Roseville, Yuba City. Yahoo Sports continues after a live update from Fox News. Fox News Radio. I'm Lisa Lissera. Panic and chaos at a parade in a small town in Virginia when an elderly driver loses control of his